Welcome back to Coffee and Crafts. Um, so we are doing a series of short videos on stitching together this cute little Yoshi wallet. So I have a quick video on how to um, thread the needle and lock it in place with the thread so that way you don't lose it during your project. Um, I have a quick video on how to prepare the leather so that way it's not the pieces aren't falling all over the place as you're trying to stitch to get them held in place. And then this one is going to be the actual stitching itself and seeing some leather uh, stitching techniques that's going to help give us a straight line and a nice uh, tight design in our stitch. So a lot of people use a stitching pony, which um, is really just a specialized device. A stitching pony is two wooden pieces that stand up like this and clamp together to hold your leather in place. It makes it a lot easier than just trying to hold on to it as you're working. But they're actually expensive for what they are. Um, so I'm going to use a vise, which is fine for small projects. If I did have a big project, the stitching pony would be the better option. Um, so I'm going to use a regular tabletop vise. I'm going to put some cloth, just a rag, inside it because I don't want the leather uh, to get pinched by the metal and leave creases. And let's see, I'm going to try to line this up here where you can see it. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go around the entire edge to the back and around again, meeting back where I started, and then go down the center. So the key is, is to try to leave a nice, um, nice line with my stitch so that way you can't even tell where I started or ended. Okay, get this just in place here. One thing that I do also when I'm uh, working with sewing is I have this tin box and I actually have a magnet right on the top of it. So as I'm sewing, I can just drop my needles right onto that magnet and not lose place of them. I suggest doing that. Um, when I'm not using the vise or a stitching pony or something, I actually just, if I'm sitting down on the couch, I'll just put a needle right through the, the top of my sweatpants or something to hold it in place. Not always the best idea, but these aren't sharp, so it's not a problem. Um, because of the chisel that I used, I should be able to easily go through without having to use the awe to make it um, make them bigger. Ooh. So what's happening here is because of the way I locked the, the thread in place on the needle, it's making it just a little bit thicker, almost like a knot, and making it a little hard to th pull through. There we go. So I just took that knot and just sort of flattened it out. And then because it's a diamond shape um, punch, here you can see it's a diamond shape, so I'm just going to try to angle the needle so it goes through that direction. Okay, so pull it. So start from, doesn't matter which way you go, you're just going to pull it through. And I have a whole lot of lace, so this is annoying as you get started, but make sure I remember which one I have. Okay, so now we have this. So to get started, and this is right in the center here, I'm going to go through the front side. Now you may think that there's no need for a specific um, method or flow, not flow, rhythm, that's it, to this, but there really is. So we're going to always go through the front and then we're going to pull it towards the back. What that's going to do is it's going to lock it up into the point of that diamond back this way. That way the needle coming from the back has plenty of room to go into the front point of the diamond. We're just going to pull that one through. And now because this one is in the point of the diamond going this way, and this one's in the point going that way, we want to just tighten it up that way. So pull this one forward, pull the back back, and the front forward. Okay, and then just repeat through the front to the back, pulling it back into the back of that diamond, and the back side through the front of the diamond. and then lock them in place. 
I'll do a few stitches and then we can look at it to see if we have a nice, nice straight line. Because if you don't do this, if sometimes you go front to back and then back to front and you don't pull them in place, they, a couple things happen. One, your thread could overlap, which could cause it to actually, um, oops, which could cause you to actually push the needle through the thread, which you definitely don't want to do. The other, but the more commonly what's going to happen is your thread's just going to look jumpy. You're going to have a line up here and a line here, and it's, it's going to look like that. It's not going to be a straight line. So it's really important to have a, a rhythm and stick to it the entire time you're stitching. The other thing is, did you see what I just did? So sometimes, I'm not even positive if this makes a huge difference, but sometimes I've noticed it. Your when I bring this through, this thread's going to, how do I explain it? When I'm putting the back thread through the front, sometimes the one that came in from the back is underneath it. Sometimes it's above it based on where I just throw the needle down. And where that sits is going to change the line of the thread. So I always try to make sure that your back thread is going in either always above or always below where the front, where the other thread is hanging out. That was probably a terrible description, um, but I think as you do it, you're going to realize what I mean. So let's see if I can kind of demo it. Okay, so pull it back. So I'm just gonna let that drop, and then sorry for that. I can either put this through to where the thread is underneath it, or if it was like that, it would be above it. See what I mean? It seems like a very minor detail, but that actually is going to, <laughs> that's gonna make a big difference. I am sorry, that was awful. I use my phone still, I don't have a, a good camera. So I'm gonna to try to get into the rhythm of always dropping that needle down and having it below the loop in the back. And lock it in place. One more stitch and we'll take a look at it. The problem with having so much thread is you spend a lot of time pulling it through a lot of time finding your needle, that's why the magnet really helps. See, I did it again. I dropped this above it, so now it's going to be underneath it, and I don't want to do that. Have to make sure to pay attention at where everything is falling. So what we have here is a nice straight line and I'm just going to keep doing that. I think that if you see it from the back you can see there's one stitch that's out of place and I think that was where I stitched it on the wrong side of the thread so I didn't pay attention to whether it was above or below so that's what will happen if you don't do that. So it's really, really important to make sure that you just have one motion that you choose, one rhythm to it and just keep repeating that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this wallet and I'll come back with my next tutorial which will be um, finishing the edges. So thanks for uh, tuning in to Coffee and Crafts with Madam K. As usual it might not be the right way but it's the Madam K way. Make sure to uh, check out the next video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.